I think probably we can start on uh, on time. So so let me take the responsibility to be the uh, temporary chair uh, for this session. And I believe uh, Peter will be with us in a few minutes. And uh, um, um, well, thank you so much for everyone joining this session. Uh, I'm Dr. Patrick Huang from Taiwan. And today is our session uh, dedicated to hair, uh, laser hair removal, which is a very common procedure uh, in our daily practice. And, but we would like to know what's happening or anything new that we have to, we, that we can uh, refine our procedure and also new that uh, a new advancement. And uh, today we have three speakers. Um, the first one will be Dr. Pan from Israel. And he is a practitioner, but currently run a laser company and is a medical director of laser company in Israel. And the second speaker is our close friend, Dr. Gun Su Lee, who is a, uh, not only a laser specialist in South Korea, but he also quite focused on uh, the laser hair removal. And the third speaker will be me, and I will sh share something new and innovative uh, uh, in, the, in the literature. And let's welcome our first speaker, uh, Dr. Pam uh, from Israel. Um, Pam, please. Okay, so I'm doing share screen right now. Yes. Okay, I hope everybody can see it. Can you? Yeah, sure. Thank okay, you. So first of all, uh, it's a great honor and privilege to be a guest speaker today with you here. And uh, I will jump straight into uh, the water, as you can say. Um, let's see that it moves. Okay. So first of all, is there an anatomical change in the literature for an Asian hair? So I searched the literature and I found this. And the main conclusion is that the Asian hair in, is more straight and has a round cross-section. But if you see in the picture, uh, the contrast is hard, hard for the devices. What do I mean? You have usually black hair on darker skin. So the contrast is hard for the devices uh, to differentiate between them. So that's the one of the uh, um, milestones you need to bypass. So we all know that uh, we have to uh, adjust the wavelength to the depths of the target lesion. And we hear uh, the chromophore is uh, melanin. And uh, okay, so how is it connected to the hair? So in hair, you have to adjust heat that will go along the shaft and reach the stem cells in the hair shaft and the stem cells in the dermal papilla. You have to give enough heat so there will be thermal damage. If you are not doing thermal damage enough, you will might have paradoxical hair growth. And, but if you do achieve it, you will manage to destroy the anagen phase and hair will not grow. So what is the challenge? To deliver as much possible ener energy in heat to the hair, but not to the skin. And doing that without damaging the surrounding tissue, we're doing hypo, hyperpigmentation, scarring, burning. So it's a, so it's a real challenge because if you have another pigment and it's just on the layer of the superficial epidermis, it's not as deep, you, you already attach it, but here you use the hair follicle to bring the damage. So the solution is to harness the selective photothermolysis that mixes the impact of the target and minimize the impact on the surrounding skin tissue. This is the big story. So next slide. So in 1981, they created the classic theory of uh, uh, SPT. So basically it meant that uh, thermal relaxation time is defined as the time needed for the target tissue to cool down by 50% for heat dissipation. Okay, this is great for everything but the hair. So in 2001, they extended the same people who created that theory said the next thing. Okay, the time needed for the outermost part of the target to reach the target damage temperature for heat diffusion. So if the heater is here, the photon is hitting here. Uh, if the thermal relaxation time is too short, then maybe the heat will come until here, but the target is a bit different farther. So they wanted to see if the heat arrived to the target, that's why they extended their theory. And the theory says that you need around 30 milliseconds to uh, create enough heat to create enough destruction through the hair follicle until the target that you are uh, needed. So we have two main principles of how to use light in order to attack the uh, this uh, mission. Either use IPL, which is a polychromatic incoherent and diverging, or you use laser light source from different kinds, which is basically monochromatic coherent and collaminated. 
and you need to search different uh, targets according to the depths. So just this short picture, you put the handle, the light uh, comes, the heat comes from heat. So heat is emitted from the handle, absorbed, and then you have a destruction. And two, four weeks after it, the dead follicles will finally shed from the skin and you have hair loss. Um, so hair removal. But everybody knows that each anatomical area in the body has different anagen, telogen, catagen, canogen, and all of these other stages. So you also have to take that into account when you want to tell the person what to expect. Like if I come today, in how many weeks I have to come, what is the, uh, how many uh, treatments do I need? And all of this is for the setup of the clinic. So it's very important to uh, adjust between what the patient wants and what you can deliver to him. Next. So we know that in one single treatment, you cannot destroy all the hair uh, um, regardless of what you are using because uh, all the hairs are not at the same time at the same place. So before this hair and this hair is on and again, another one is in a different place. That's why we don't shed all of our hair continuously because some are going, some are falling. Okay, so you need several treatments, usually six sessions in order to achieve um, hair removal properly per anatomical region. Now we have the main main four. So you have the intense pulse light, which is in the visible light from 400 to 1,200 nanometers, usually Xenon lab, usually Fitzpatrick one to four. The diode laser, the main uh, advantage is for it, it works on all Fitzpatricks, okay? Not just one to four. Alexandrite usually was considered the gold standard, but it usually between works great alone on its own without additional of anything else about speed trick one to three, and ND YAG on its own, it's four to six, usually in order to minimize the deficit of the Alexandrite with Asians, you add both of them together to compensate. But you know one more thing that uh, the higher the energy, the more chances you have for more side effects because you are using higher joules, higher temperature, and uh, you will need to minimize it because damage with higher energies is more probable, but, with any uh, thing that you will choose, very important is to do the training for the handler and to choose the correct uh, pulse jowls and the skin types. And training is very important because most side effects happen from bad training or uh, inappropriate setting for the choosing of the uh, device energies and etc. Now, if you want to choose, so I advise you to look on, on this graph that we created. If you have a skin type that is dark, you will try to go up like that from Ruby to diode to NDIAG as long as it's getting darker. If you have light, go back again. If your hair is thin, then go to this side, to the IPL. If your hair is more darker and thicker, go back like that. So the aim is to make a specialized medicine for each patient according to his body types because we have a lot of different body types. Uh, I gathered here some side effects that happen. So usually you have the acute short-term side effects, pain, peripheral choroma, blistering, less side effects, so they are called less, so the post-inflammatory ones that can happen, and the rare are the atrophy scarring. Um, these are the side effects that I found just from one uh, article in, from 2011 that said that Ruby and Fitzpatrick has this amount of uh, uh, side effects in Fitzpatrick free like that, and in four and six, he adds more. Most of the, the industry has left the Ruby and shifted to the Alexandrite and the YAG IPL diode. But just for to mention, because with every treatment, one of the most important thing is safety of the patient and informed consent, and you must tell him you can have those stuff and you should know it. Okay, so. Which is better? So I gathered all of this wonderful article from Korea, from United States, and they are comparing and they are doing this and that. But if you read all of them, you see that using high quality system results both in diode or Alexandrite and YAG together are mostly are the same. And is it true? So that's where I come into the picture. And I say hair removal paradigm shift in Asia. And what does it mean? I recommend to start using in the first one to four early treatment, the diode laser, which will show you what is power motion. Then in the following treatment, switch to IPL. Why is it like that? Because I think that those are synergistic and the complete hair removal solution as a diode covers all skin types and most hair types, terminal plus intermediate. In contrast, the IPL in the later treatments, you will have very fine and light and thinner hair. 
and the more treatments you do, that's what you end up with. So they are more superficial and the IPL can give you the finishing of touch for what you need. So it's not just one, but maybe two approaches. And now I will show you. So in the past, you had single stamping technique. You had in one, in every movement, you had coagulation, a low post consumption, you had the result. This was fine hair. This used to be the old techniques. Then came the other technique. He said, no, we are not going to do coagulation in every step. You're going to accumulate. So you are shooting one, you're shooting again, you're shooting again, and only at the end of it, you will have coagulation. So this was used to be the in motion, the fast technique. You are moving very fast, but it needs multiple passes and to return uh, in order to get it. And now I will show you the next move. The next move is power motion. You have up to three times faster, full coagulation at every time, better results. But I can tell you power motion 12,000 times, but until you will see it, you won't believe it to me. So I'm going to show you in movie soon. Okay, so next comes the Fourier's law that says that how heat, heat is transferred according. So the power motion follows this law that you want to create a light and do the continuous effect of the heat even after you are gone. So it's still working. Now I will show you power motion on our patient that follows the Fourier's law, and I will guide you. So it's her armpit that we are starting with. Uh, the, uh, so this is the red, the handle is here. Soon uh, it's going to start and will come. And it's like as if you are drawing on the patient with heat. Okay, this is heat camera. And I'm sorry for the quality, but uh, heat cameras are expensive and it's very hard to get them. I'm trying to improve the camera next time. And now I will show you that what's happened on her hand when this is the handle and we are basically working on her and it's as if we are spraying heat all over her hand and the heat stays even after we stopped, okay? This causes mm -hmm. the thermal damage. This is what power motion is. So it's not just like in stamping, staying at one point. It takes a lot of time to, to gather. So we can uh, do hair removal of entire back in less than 20 minutes. We can do a whole person in 40 minutes. Other competitors will take them an hour and a half on one person. This uh, gives more heat, faster, last longer. For the patient, it takes less time. For the practitioner, you can have multiple patients at the same time, or let's say five in an hour, what you used to do one. So this is power motion and we showed it with thermal regulation because without this, it's very hard to imagine how the heat is working because in a normal camera, you wouldn't see the heat. The patient would feel it, but you would be able to transfer the idea. So this is the idea behind power motion. Okay, so the next step is for the practitioner. Should I use a big uh, spot size or a small spot size? So if you have a big spot size, you, can, you think that you can gather bigger areas, faster treatment. But actually, if you go in depth, and if you choose the smaller one, you can choose uh, smaller and sensitive areas, but you have more energy for a, a smaller medium. So you can reach up to 40 joules instead of like the big ones until uh, 30 joules. But that's pr uh, the preference of the user. But just remember that bigger isn't always better, okay, from the head size. And also if you have a cooling tip here, it's helpful for the patient because he, in one moment, you don't need two devices. And if it's too hot for him, you can stop. You can just start with the tip, cool down the skin and continue. Uh, this is the new, new uh, prospect that some companies are using. Why is it important? Because you know, one person can have more than one Pitzpatrick per anatomy location. So the armpit may be much more brighter than your forehead. Maybe the between the legs is less um, than what you'll have on the chest. Uh, your patient between two treatments, he went and have a tan. Now he comes back, he's in different colors in the, the face here and here. So this device measures the melanin in 875 and 660 nanometer. It gives you a scale from zero to 100. But why is it important? Maybe not the doctor is doing the treatment, a nurse, a, a dermal practitioner, a cosmetician is doing it. So she can measure the melanin content in the skin in different areas put the parameters in the device, the device will give her much more safety margins. You have less burns, less side effects, less complaints, and better safety for the patient, which is the number one rule. Always patient safety first and, and uh, success later. So this device uh, is from the outside, gives you a numerical number and it's valid. And the system tells you safe parameters. 
And this is how we are using it. So basically you clean the area you treat, you mark it with a pen, you shave it. Um, again, if you have something that you don't want to treat, you cover it. You put the melanin meter on the leg, in the groin, and in different areas you want to treat, and then you know how much energy you need to give it to. You put the gel uh, that you want to use because without the gels, you'll create burns, okay? And you start treating. And this is one example of a very large retrospective study with 650 females with skin type four and five between the years 2015 and 18 using IPL. And they uh, divided the pulse here into two, so we'll have more downtime. And they managed to uh, give quite good results, even with Asian hair, and even all, even already after the first treatment. And I can tell you this, the best results usually are, are seen between the first, second, and third treatments. And then you, you'll see it less and less because you have less hair to work on. But you can see that the IPL is good. So what about the diode? Here you can see an example of a, a guy that come after two years and did another treatment only after two years from the first one because the maintenance was great. Also dark haired and here it's the ALD and you can see the numbers of the fluence in the mode and the pulse wave in eight sessions. And here you can see with the armpit uh, after three weeks and here on the bikini line and here also on the back. And uh, what is the recommended uh, in between sessions? is that uh, with the diode laser, uh, the first and second is between five to six, and then later is the second and third session, six to eight weeks. And what are your aims after each treatment? You should tell the patient uh, that you will have diffused erythema and peripheral edema that usually resolves in few hours, but this is what we aim for. If he has this reaction, it shows that it's going to have hair loss, uh, hair removal successfully, and you can even see it in skin type four and five, but depends on the contrast, it might be much more milder than skin type two. And um, thank you very much. Okay, I think we've got uh, our chair, uh, the moderator, our chair of this session now. Hey, Peter, are you online now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm not feeling well today, but uh, yeah, I'll just join in. Uh, you're okay now because uh, Peter is visiting uh, the US. Uh, yeah, no, I'm having fever. Uh, <laughs> I, I must be COVID. Okay, uh, but... so you you okay? You want? Uh, I I I I think you 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 go ahead. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I, uh -huh. I I'll be around and yes. um, yeah, okay. I'll comment when when okay when I feel okay coming. okay. Thank you, okay, thank you, Peter. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so uh, I think uh, Dr. Pam from Israel um, make a great uh, presentation because uh, uh, he summarized everything that we should uh, concern when we're treating patient, Asian skin and uh, mentioned that uh, uh, Dio in his opinion, in his opinion is one of the uh, proper option that we can consider in our practice. And now we let's welcome Dr. Lee and we'll have a uh, Q&A session uh, after all, all this uh, lecture finish. So let's welcome Dr. Lee from South Korea and our crew's friend will uh, give a lecture that probably mentioned on the uh, different wavelengths. Uh, can you see the, yes. the yes. screen, yeah? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for the, the very nice uh, presentation from the, Dr. Pam. And then I will explain about a little bit about the, the another uh, laser for the hair remover. It's uh, uh, Alexandrite and the uh, Diag laser. Uh, and, uh, Dr. Pam uh, explained the, all the, the devices for the uh, hair remover, but I will explain in 755 and 1064 nanometer beam. Uh, 755 uh, absorbs more uh, melanin than 1064, so the, it is more effective for the hair remover, but uh, uh, 1064 nanometer also effective uh, to, to treat uh, the pigmented skin region, uh, especially skin type 6 and 5. Uh, I used uh, this device as a Candela uh, Gentleman Pro. It is a very well designed machine for the hair remover. And they produce a very uh, uh, support a very big size of the uh, spot up to 25 millimeters spot size 
and they provide also a very wide range of uh, possibilities. So we can use this one for the hair removal and the uh, pigmented skin region and the uh, vascular region treatment. It has a multifunctional treatment device. The, each, the, uh, this slide shows the uh, new specification of the Gentlemax probe. And then especially I produce dual wavelengths and uh, 755 and 10, 1064 as a, is good for, for all the skin types. It produces more higher energy and uh, it provides a very short pulse duration and uh, it has a very faster repetition rate and the larger spot. And also more important thing is uh, it uh, attached with the uh, DC, DCD is a dynamic cooling device on the machine. Uh, the dynamic device cooling device uh, it protect the skin surface so it's very uh, important for the uh, treatment of, of this machine uh, recently uh, there is an, another uh, newer device is uh, uh, just a testing at the moment and then uh, it is uh, showed uh, uh, the study in the in two years ago in lasers in surgery medicine and it's combination of two different devices in one handpiece. So, and the, it, the, uh, the study uh, used a 12 millimeter and a three millisecond and uh, used a uh, DCD. Uh, according to the study, the, you can see the thermal uh, heating is increased in 70, uh, 755. This uh, for the right is a uh, uh, epidermis and the bulb is uh, hot. And but uh, for the young laser, the only mild bulb heating is observed. So to observe the the equivalent bulb heating, the young young fluence should be uh, increased to double the alexandrite uh, fluence. And Dr. Pam shows uh, this slide is similar to the slide that, uh, which is shown from Dr. Pam. Seven fifty five. Uh, it can cover from fine hair to coarse hairs. But the uh, uh, NDR uh, wavelengths can especially treat the dark skin type and the two fair skin type, but uh, this is less effective than for the fine hairs. So the, uh, if it combine, combine with the both uh, wavelengths, it can uh, cover uh, this part. So the, the uh, Maybe the combination device can, can be improve improve the the, the effect the uh, treatment effect. Uh, this is my case. Uh, I uh, first of all I uh, treat with the uh, ten six for uh, MDR glazers some areas, and then uh, some areas I you combine with the uh, seven fifty five. So uh, after finishing the MDR uh, laser beam. So after one treatment, you can see the very uh, relatively nice clearing compared to the uh, this only one uh, wavelength selection. Uh, when he, uh, after just right after the treatment of the, this laser, uh, you can see some uh, small perifollicular erythema and edema. It uh, lasts a few minutes. And it gradually subsided. So we should use a uh, post cooling uh, co contact cooling. So after cooling, the uh, erythema uh, subsided gradually. And then this is an uh, underarm treatment. After two, three two times of treatment, uh, the effect is very uh, impressive. And it's uh, under the neck of a uh, skin type five uh, case. And then he has a, she has a, a hair, the pseudo follicular this barbe. And then uh, after the treatment, uh, three times of treatment, the pigmentation and the hair is uh, very much you know, improved. Uh, this is a skin type three. Uh, and the, I used the, the, the combination method with a 1064, 30 millisecond and the 10, 18 millispots of a 10, uh, 755 with a three millisecond with a DCD. And uh, uh, you can see the pigmentation also improved after the four times of treatment. The hair also improved. 
the uh, Alexandrite laser can be used uh, to treat uh, blackheads on the nose and uh, uh, trichostasis spinulosa. Uh, as you can see, it is very uh, effective for the, the poor problems also. Uh, Dr. Lin and uh, studied the, the kind of a dip, uh, depilatory laser it, it, uh, makes a miniature, miniaturization of hair follicle. And then uh, according to his study, the destruction of melanin containing cells in the precortex region. And then he watched the, the necrosis of adjacent uh, non-pigmented dermal papillae. So, so dermal papillae cells, I think, is the, about uh, 20 per, by 20% after laser injuries. So after the thermal, thermal injury on the, the structure of melanin-containing cells in the precortex area and the nearby areas of uh, dermal papillae is also damaged. So the terminal hair became the miniaturized hair. On the contrary, uh, uh, as you know, at the, the, there is a paradoxical hypertrichosis problem is also exist. Uh, until now, the about the pathogenesis is not uh, entirely clear, but uh, it is believed to uh, is related to the suboptimal fluence, which lead the uh, conversion of velous hair to terminal hairs. So, sub uh, therapeutic thermal injury affect uh, the follicular cycling, cycling. So, the terminal hair grows from the hair uh, velous hair. It is more common in, on the face and the neck. So on the contrary to previous uh, the, the picture, the, from velous hair, there's uh, some suboptimal uh, stimulation on the uh, peripheral follicular vasculature. It uh, led to the change to the terminal hairs. This is another one very common uh, side effect. And then it is, it's not that very common. Sometimes you can encounter this problem. And it is a uh, uh, crescent shaping hyperpigmentation. And uh, in the, the studies, they uh, they, are, uh, they said uh, it is due to the mal, uh, mal alignment of the cryogen spray in the razor. And then, but I think uh, there's some um, opinion of uh, access of laser beam or so problem. If it's not, not very uh, close to vertical, it can make uh, this condition as well. I think it, it is more, uh, it's one of the cause of this problem. And also uh, I'd like to mention about the contact. The handpiece tip should not uh, contact like this because uh, if it con to treat uh, two big areas, the handpiece tip can be very uh, heated very well. So uh, I don't contact this handpiece to skin surface. surface. I just uh, keep the distance about two millimeter or three millimeter around that distance from the skin surface. Uh, here's uh, my plan to uh, protect side effect after hair removal laser. Uh, first of all, uh, the rather than shaving, I prefer the slipping the hairs. And then skin surface pre-cooling and the post-cooling also important and avoid the sun exposure before and after the treatment and use uh, some medicines and uh, avoid the uh, perioculi area. It is very, very important. Should not uh, do the treatment on the perioculi areas and uh, avoid the tattooed area and then do not directly contact and piece to the tip to, from the skin surface. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank um, you very much. Thank, wow. Thank you, Gunsu. It's a great, uh, great talk. And, thank uh, you, thank and you. The, <laughs> so now we know that the difference or the similarity of both that the uh, dial mm -hmm. laser and the uh, 755 and the 1064. And, and then I'll, let's move to the third talk. And uh, I will, uh, well, okay. So is everyone seeing my my screen? Yes. Yeah, I can see you. Okay, it's good. Okay, good. Uh, oh, it's okay now. Yeah, so that's just what's yes. like. Okay. Okay. Good. Oh oh. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, appreciate. It's good. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
because that the Oh, I'm sorry. It's closed. Yeah, it's closed. I see it because yeah, of yeah. the okay. yeah. It's okay now. Yeah. Okay. Um. First of all, I would like to appreciate Peter's sharing, especially currently this thick uh, in the U.S. and uh, attending the annual meeting up in New Orleans. And also, thank you so much for your passion and energy to share this session. And uh, let's move to the what's new. Uh, laser hair removal is popular, but not cost effective and must, must frequently be redone. And the financial burden impact of the laser therapy was significantly among all treatment modalities. So when patients spend too much time, energy, and money on laser hair removal, it is not only against social norms, but also lead to dissatisfaction. So we, we need to worry about that if a patient received the treatment, but the response is not as good as what they expect, they, they feel dissatisfied. So that's reason why that we need to um, very good care of the, the energy setting, especially we need to avoid uh, complications. And um, in hair, laser hair removal, the practitioner undergo prolonged exposure uh, is widely is, um, is without any protective measure. So ensure the safety or out step, we should minimize the production of the surgical smoke Increase the efficacy if uh, it's evacuation and prevent its inhalation and you, by using effective mask. And in this report, a new machine that uh, the 750 Type D4 laser combining a smoke evacuator and the cold air cooling in the hand paste uh, potentially could minimize the release of smoke while allowing the comfort uh, of the cold air cooling. And you can take a look at each bar in the figure represent, for example, the highest of uh, the, the uh, air pollution actually is without evacuator. And, but uh, with external evacuator or with integrated evacuator will significantly lower the, the air pollution. So let's take a look at the new device. And uh, Dr. Michael Go present a new, new device uh, combining three wavelengths. Uh, that's that 10, uh, 755, 510, and 1064 in a single pulse. Uh, well, let's, let's take a look at the result. And um, actually, the, after a uh, three to four uh, session of the treatment, the uh, moderate uh, hair reduction, uh, we can see the result and the, the satisfaction uh, from the patient actually is 3.8 out of five. So uh, I would say that uh, all the wavelengths probably will work, but we're not so sure if we uh, increase uh, more wavelengths, uh, if that will be satisfied patient more. And, uh, and sometimes I use ice pack to reduce pain, just like what uh, Gun Su mentioned. We have to do uh, pre-treatment cooling and also uh, post-treatment cooling. And uh, sometimes if we like to reduce the pain, uh, especially when topical numbing cream did not work well, that ice pack is a good idea. And in this study, the author, the author compared the effectiveness of ice pack uh, to the topical numbing cream uh, for, uh, for pain reduction. And while pain reduction or pain control with ice and topical numbing cream, actually uh, the two modalities did not differ in terms of the degree of pain reduction uh, during the, the axillary hair removal. And the whole story actually is one, once we put the ice pack uh, at least uh, five to 10 minutes, actually the temperature of the skin temperature will be down to five degrees of Celsius. And then even though you uh, remove the ice pack, actually the temperature is still very low, uh, even after you finish the laser, laser treatment. So temperature will be kept at uh, about 22, 24, 25, and 26 degree uh, 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 at every minute from two to five minutes after ice pack removed. So the average uh, pain score immediately after the procedure is concurrent with the skin surface temperature. And the ice pack uh, will also reduce perifollicular erysema significantly. So I think that's probably that we can increase uh, the fluence and uh, it's, I think it's an idea proposed by the author and also would reduce the risk of the complication. An ice pack actually can reduce the pine uh, by 
by reducing the skin temperature. And usually the skin temperature was kept uh, at uh, around 12 to 30 degree of Celsius. And uh, this one, this temperature can reduce the nerve conduction velocity and also induce a local anesthesia. I think probably we usually do that when we are doing some procedure, for example, injection for kids. And that one can numb their skin uh, significantly without using any numbing cream and it is more efficient. And so this is also what we're doing in our uh, daily practice. So, uh, so if we can take, if we can uh, provide a uh, hair remote, laser hair remote for a patient still receive a uh, systemic isotretinoin, I think, I think the answer probably is yes, because currently we know uh, it's safe. And uh, in this report, uh, that was reported in year 2021, uh, when the patient received treatment at uh, isotretinoin at uh, 30 dose of 33 milligram, and uh, uh, although 4.5 day cessation was done, there's no difference between treatment and the control group regarding the side effect. And so let's look at that something innovative idea and that is their finding. Uh, I think this one I already mentioned by uh, Gwen Su about uh, my colleagues, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jerry Lin's idea. And uh, Jerry Lin mentioned that uh, the only, oh, so let's move this to this one. They found that the only treated antigen here, these two here mean the miniaturization in the next antigen. But uh, for the, the telogen here, because uh, there's no melanin adjacent to the dermal papilla. So therefore the, ther thermo, the thermo, thermo necrosis and uh, uh, cell reduction was not detected in the dermal papilla. Uh, I mean, for the, uh, telogen here. So that's why that uh, only um, only energen here will, can be uh, removed uh, and uh, uh, removed successfully gradually, uh, but instead of the telogen here. So let's take a look again that the only, uh, only uh, the hair removal laser mini miniaturized hair by inducing thermal necrosis and the dermal cell uh, of thermal, thermal papillota because of the secondary uh, heat diffusion from the melanin containing pre cortex uh, cells in the energy hair bulbs, uh, but not in the telogen hair bulbs. And uh, our friend, uh, Dr. Victor Klatkini Tichi uh, from Romania, proposed a simple acronym watch, W A T C H, which is quite similar to the idea proposed by uh, Dr. Gunsu, uh, Gunsu uh, just mentioned uh, a few minutes ago that to increase the safety and the efficacy of hair, laser hair removal. So uh, by uh, before act, the practitioner should watch the photo type hair, uh, skin and sight. And when acting, got to pay attention to the wavelengths, pulse duration, fluence and size, blood size and frequency. And uh, also do a uh, spot test. Uh, before start treatment, got to wait and see the response of the testing spot. And if necessary, we have to do some correction of the parameter and which will make the procedure safer. And last not least, uh, keep proper in instruction before your patient go home. And uh, the following two idea of the finding probably might not be very common in Asian, but it might be useful in managing some rare uh, situation. Uh, although hair, hair, laser hair removal typically improve the keto, acrylic keto, phallus nuke, not all lesions are equally responsive to the treatment. And the Dr. Umar from California describes selecting patient based on height of individual follicular centric lesion. And he also create a laser treatment classification according to, um, uh, uh, to ma maximize patient uh, uh, outcome and the expectation. And first of all, uh, we have to skip the plaque of, of the plaque because the, the plaque usually is higher. And then we have to choose the lesion, the vertical height uses above the skin surface, two to three uh, millimeter, because they would like to maximize the treatment effect because for if the plaque is higher, uh, the, the laser beam probably cannot reach the uh, thermal popular and the, 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 the popular. So that's the reason why the, the treatment effect probably will be, will be less. And this is the uh, severity classification, uh, which extends from the level one, uh, level one to level four, based on the scope of lesion spread. So, for a patient with mild, mild situation, mild uh, severity, for example, the level one and the level two, uh, we can do like the the author proposed here. 
And for the patient, the ND, for this patient, um, they suggest to use the ND YAC laser uh, because it, it will penetrate deep it is. For the level one and two patient, the procedure probably will be the most uh, rewarding because it gets rid of the disease and uh, also produce a very natural cosmetic outcome. But for uh, uh, level three and level four, uh, I think a cosmetic outcome is not, not good not as good as the type one and type the level one and level two, level two. And let's move to the final part of the folliculitis after laser hair removal. Uh, Dr. Schiller from Michigan proposed a mechanism to explain the inside story of this complication. It usually happens nine days after the treatment. And in this report, doxycycline plus a topical sterile work well to relieve inflammation. And uh, he proposed uh, the uh, he proposed a theory about that uh, the hair follicle is destroyed through the photosomolysis, and the remaining hair shape uh, was gradually extruded through the skin. Uh, so, to my eyes, it could be one of the most efficient version of the transepidermal elimination. And at the, the end of my talk, I would like to invite all of you uh, to be part of the pre-congress pre-congress of the pre WCD Asia on time on site meeting in Singapore on July 3rd this year. And the theme of this event is innovation, impact, and the insight in aesthetic dermatology and uh, skin surgery. I, I appreciate my industry partners for this educational event. And at least um, uh, 12 leading Asian and Indian dermatologists and skin surgeons from 11 countries and will share their clinical pros and most impo important, will interact with the audience and uh, answer questions in person to enhance the learning experience. So here's the proposed program and it will, it will begin at 1 p.m. and end at 9 p.m. on July 3rd. And please arrive in Singapore one day earlier to learn about aesthetic dermatology skin surgery. You don't need to have to push um, a rush from one area to the, the next to catch up uh, on aesthetic talks in separate room uh, at WCD. So this event, in my opinion, probably one of the best uh, in class in Asian skin. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Peter here. Uh, I, uh, yeah, can, please. Yeah. Can Can I just ask? Uh, I specs them. Um, I know it, it does help, but when it comes to legs, uh, because you know the the I really hate to do hair removal on both legs uh, because the it's very time consuming, right? Yeah. So, but luckily the the machines that I have has the contact cooling already, so I don't mm -hmm. I don't uh, routinely use ice pack to do uh pre cooling because I find that once ice packs. By the time you you move to another place, right? The, it's gone, right? The the coldness of the thing. Unless every spot, you know, you 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 pre cool, pre cool, pre cool again. Uh, then there will I think double the time of uh, the the procedure. Well, what do you guys think? There are uh, several types of cooling that you can apply to the skin. One is using a zimmer that looks like a vacuum machine or something like that that just throws cooled air and then you can operate, but it requires another hand or another operator and another device. So it's cost more and you, not everyone has it. The other one is to uh, use uh, cryo spray that you even have for sport injuries or cryo machines. Also not the best idea. The other one is to use a derma roller that is already cooled in the refrigerator and then just roll over the leg. That's also an idea, but I like the best, the tip because in the cooling tip in our devices, you can control between five to 15 degrees the difference of how much coolness you want. So let's say you are on the hand, on the leg right now. You ask the patient, how painful it is for you right now? He says one to 10. So you go, cool it more, add in the device and then cool and then continue and then cool and continue. And then you get exactly what he wants. But the one minus thing is that if you are trying to satisfy your patient by doing less a treatment because of the jars that you need, then you will create for him paradoxical hair growth. So technically mm -hmm. you should tell them one, it, it should be painful in a way, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to decrease the influence because then you won't have hair loss, hair removal. You will tell me that the treatment is not working, but you should know, no pain, no gain. So minimal pain is part of the game. You just need to convey it. You need mm -hmm. to tell him, but if you use power motion in our technique, then it takes 
much less time to do the entire leg, or you can do both legs or even the entire body. So he doesn't mind for a short amount of pain in very, in like 20 minutes. But if it's in one and a hour, half, two hours, three hours event, then yes, he will be discomfort. So that's why if you can do the treatment in short amount of time, then the people are willing to take the pain and even when you're using it and, and roll over because you, no parking spaces, they are going for the next uh, event in their life. You know, uh, hair removal doesn't happen every two days. It happens yeah. every six, eight, so they can uh, enjoy it. Yeah, how about Kunsu? Yeah, the, the, uh, the hair removal is a time-consuming procedure. And if you focus on the hair, the pain control, uh, eventually uh, we have to pay more time. So the I think uh, the post calling also very important. And then as Dr. Pine mentioned, uh, I I like to use a uh, ice pack pad and then the the free cooled uh, roller, free cooled yes, rolling free -cooled device roller. is yes. very com very convenient. And then some uh, sometimes I use a Zimmer machine after finish yes. the procedure because. But during the procedure, if I use a uh, zimmer, it can spray more the, the, the small particles of the so to the entire room. So it's, I don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> so the, after finishing one side, we can do uh, when I uh, uh, having a, a resting time. But uh, usually uh, to, for the small uh, part of the uh, hair removal, it, it, it's not a big issue. Mm -hmm. But uh, in a few cases, I can encounter very uh, the pain uh, threshold, very low uh, pain threshold patient. In mm -hmm. the cases, usually uh, men. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's men, right. men, men, men. Is usually more, men yeah, cannot right. tolerate. The you're right. Dialogue. You're right. Yeah, they, if, if, let's say let's say you remove in the back, but then you in go the up nape. into the, in here, the back here. in the neck. Then they start yeah, screaming. The so yeah. then you tell them you cool it more, and then it works. Because yeah. otherwise, what will happen? They will come in eight weeks, and they will tell you, "Look, I have a new, new, um, how you say, ranks on my shoulders because here the hair grow. You did the yeah. less uh, pain, yes, but the the back is okay." So uh, one of the things that my colleague here uh, said about the paradoxical hypertrophy that it's unknown is one because of the lower amount of energy that is needed mm. per that area. Uh, mm. If you have thinner skin, so it might be more painful. But another thing is that. A woman that has uh, um, uh, abnormal hormonal, like uh, with the uh, PCOS, and they have like that. So the article say that a woman that suffers PCOS will, for sure, 100% will also have a paradoxical hair growth. So you need to let her know in advance. We will mm -hmm. remove it. It will take more times. We'll have to uh, schedule the appointments to be closer. Mm -hmm. But you have to tell it in advance in the informed consent. So because, you know, patients likes to complain. So you mm -hmm. have to tell them in advance, what <laughs> can you give them? What uh, is the reality of the end of result? So mm -hmm. they don't tell you later, I wasn't there. So take yeah. pictures before you take uh, their first treatment. Have informed consent that they have to write everything about themselves. If they are taking new drugs, antibiotics, they are now more sensitive to light. Uh, and there are a lot of other uh, uh, drugs that can make you sensitive. So the next treatment, you might cause them burn, but you haven't changed the, the jowls, but they haven't told you that now they are taking new medications. <laughs> so you have to ask them between each thing, did anything change in your prescriptions? Are you taking yeah. something new? Okay, mm -hmm. you should let me know. Do you use a new cosmetics? Because sometimes uh, the cosmetics on, this, on the body with, uh, with the laser, with the light, can create photo uh, reaction. So they have to communicate. It's not like, a, it's not mathematics. I give you mm -hmm. this amount of jowls, in eight weeks, you're gonna look like that. It takes time yeah. to learn the patient. Yeah, yeah. You have to do patch tests. It's mm -hmm. ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's very interesting because I, 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 had, uh, I have two different, uh, 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 there's a hair removal laser. And the one, um, as a new model actually, uh, almost painless. But the, the older one, uh, sometimes patient, especially boys, they will they cannot tolerate the pain. So that's the reason why sometimes we need to provide the ice pack uh, for cooling. But most of the patient actually they can tolerate pain. So usually, especially girls, they they, they can tolerate quite well. Yeah, that's girls, what I, you were talking. Women, girls, they know how to tolerate pain better yes. than men. It's uh, unanimous, okay. <laughs> and another thing you should uh, let know that uh, a 
I think in the world there is no law that says from what age you can do hair removal, okay? Mm -hmm. So especially uh, uh, for patients under 18, okay, that are still under guardian of their parents, you should tell them that they haven't finished yet their hormonal development mm -hmm. and that they might have more increase for paradoxical hair growth and mm -hmm. uh, that they might need more treatments and it might take more time because they are still in puberty, okay? Mm -hmm. So you help them from one side, but you should let them know ahead in advance. Uh, a, a child or an adolescent is not an adult. So the reaction time is different and they should know it ahead of the time. Yes, you can have the treatment if it causes like an aesthetic social problem, like uh, so embarrassment and stuff like that. So yeah, you can, but let them know in advance. It's not a mathematics. You have to know that there are uh, unforeseen events and you should do it lightly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, sometimes I, I treat uh, uh, some fine hairs on the above the lip, mm -hmm. the uh, middle age, I mean, middle school or high school age to, uh, girls, mm -hmm. and uh, they have feel some shame of the thick uh, hairs on here. So in mm -hmm. cases, uh, I, the effect is very good with the uh, 755 nanometer beam. But uh, I also, as you, uh, Dr. Pam mentioned, that uh, uh, we should watch more according to the so some. The horror growth more than mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years, we should watch more and then, mm -hmm. like, uh, we should uh, treat depends on the responses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the uh, exactly. three is very good, yeah. The result is, uh, I experienced uh, this uh, uh, not very common case, but the uh, like we did the uh, uh, the uh, the lady from the Russia. And then the Polish, they have a very gray hairs, gray mm -hmm. hairs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then gray, slightly dark, slightly dark gray hair, but uh, the response to the razor was not so good compared to the well, the light brown colors or dark brown hairs. Yeah. But, uh, that can be because uh, when you have more velusy hair like. Uh, and you are using uh, Alexandrito and the uh, the the uh, most, of them, most of them didn't didn't work really. So that, because first of all, uh, your uh, laser goes immediately deeper because the NDAG is until ten millimeters. You know it it runs deep. So when you have gray white hair, velous hair, or miniaturized hair, mm -hmm. you should go for superficial energy distribution. That's why I said that you start with a diode 800, let's say, Maybe, and then after uh, four treatments, go can, to IPL. Yeah, yeah. Go to the IPL. Work. IPL will have scattering of the light. It's much more superficial. It will, mm -hmm. the energy will be able to go to this velous hair and give you the best results you need that you are unable because it's like bringing a big cannon, like Andy Ag and Alexandrit is bringing a big cannon for very small element. So you need less energy there, and the energy should distribute in a different superficial way. So to tackle gray, white hair, velous miniaturized hair, use IPL. It's it's even I think that's IPL, the best. I, yeah, IPL can be uh, another solution for that. So yeah. you don't, also, don't give up on those uh, patients. So some there's some report about the radio frequency. Mm, yeah. Radio frequency device also mm -hmm. the device combined with the 810 mil nanometer, uh, millimeter, nanometer uh, wavelengths and the radio frequency in one machine. So maybe they don't. The effect is uh, it is because of the the uh, diode laser beam on, attached uh, on the the machine. So 810. For sure, the diode. I can tell you from from my experience because we are doing here testing and we are we are doing it all over the world. Uh, the diode is a great success. You think about it. You are using one device, one thing, and it works. In the other one, you have to combine Alexandri to compensate with the NDAG. That's why you cannot do it on their own. Mm -hmm. You have to have both of them. It's more expensive, uh, mm -hmm. and the, the device itself is more expensive. You also have to take that into account. And the IPL is much more cheaper. And the diode is cheaper, and also uh, in our thing that uh, the the brain of the device is in the handle itself. In the NDAG and Alexandrit, the brain is in the device, and you have to with the fiber to deliver it to the handle. So there is more things to um, to. It's like with a car, you have to do more maintenance. The cable can unscrew with time, so it it takes more uh, maintenance. Okay, 
And with the other devices is less, but if you have all of them, great, you can use all of them. But if you just have to choose, then also economy goes into play. And if you can have a device that per square meter doesn't take a lot of space, then that's also something to consider. Mm -hmm. well, I think uh, Dr. Seal from uh, Korea, uh, Seal mm -hmm. Bay, Silk Bay uh, answer, uh, asked a question about sometimes we have experienced a rebound hair growing. So do you have any idea to use this uh, to, to grow, uh, uh, well, to, tr uh, to treat uh, the grow <laughs> hair better on scalp? So do you think specific parameter or technique? Yeah, uh, if you have rebound hair growing, then uh, first of all, you should ask the patient, first of all, about new medication stuff that he's using that might affect hair growth, okay? Because some medications can create that. Second of all, you might choose to shorten the time period between each treatment, okay? So instead of waiting eight, six weeks, make it shorter, okay? Maybe the rebound hair that he's writing is basically paradoxical hair growth that was uh, with the less amount of energy needed to treat because in one session, you cannot catch all of the hairs. So those hairs that are rebound uh, are actually those hairs that you didn't manage to treat in the uh, first uh, previous session. So it's something that should be expected, should be explained, and, sh and, and, and you should just flow with it. So make more treatments, shorten the time period in between them. Uh, mm. Dr. So uh, uh, tried, I think Dr. So tried to ask about uh, the exact parameter of uh, the, the paradoxical hyper, hyper uh, Mm -hmm. Ecosis, and then yeah. the, the reason why he is asking is uh, uh he wants to use that one to make to treat uh, the bald hair to uh give the the to by to use the uh, effect of that one and then to uh, the laser treatment paradoxically make the uh androgen alopecia treatment uh, before yeah, he will grow hair like that he will make scarring or uh, burns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's two. It's like a, a different approach, but uh, it's a nice thought, but in, it doesn't work in practice. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the paradoxical hair growth only works it when is, you have uh, hair. I think this is also it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's dangerous. Uh, so in order to have paradoxical hair growth, you need to have dormant hair follicles in the area that you treat or adjacent to them. And if you mm -hmm. have baldness on the scalp and you don't have any more hair, then yeah. you you basically cause a burn because the energy that you will go, it goes directly to the skin. There is nothing less to take it, else to take uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Peter? Okay. Yes. Uh, does does yeah. anyone have, have any experience uh, using hair removal for keratosis pilaris? I know uh, there are some. Uh, yeah, I haven't used that. It's, mm. uh, it makes some effect. Yeah. Especially some, uh, some very slightly uh, uh, darker hairs in the very mm -hmm. in containing in the uh, outer surface of the arms. Yeah. 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 But combined, you should combine with the uh, medicine, and then I used uh, used to use a uh, uh, microdermabrasion, and then yeah. uh, the. Uh, I saw the retinoid, retinoid, retinoid cream yeah. Also, so yeah. yeah, but but the only thing is, you know, those are not curative. You know, when we when we look at yeah, but it makes uh, it, yeah. it, uh, improve. Yeah, so if, it, if it, it will. In in dermatology, a lot of things are not uh, curative, and they will come back to you again, and you should explain that you, the the most you can do is mild milder symptoms or alleviate it for a while. Uh, but not promise uh, complete uh, success. So I'm wondering uh, what kind of situation will suggest patient to offer this option to your patient uh, regarding the keratosis pilaris? Uh, uh, for the keratosis pilaris, uh, uh, I suggest the, the patient to manage in a very long time. Mm -hmm. More than a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes I uh, take a break, especially in summertime. It's difficult to do that in, during the time. So mm. uh, I prefer to treat uh, with the, uh, in the from fall to winter time. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Any more questions? Yeah, Peter, you want to make uh, a, no. Yeah, I think, make, I think a, we are make yeah. a closing. And yeah, yeah, I yeah. think uh, yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you for all the distinguished speakers we have here. Right? Sorry, I can't join you all. Yeah. Uh, Basically, I, I look like a monster right now. Very, very tired. Yeah, enjoy yeah. your uh, time in your New Orleans. Uh, I, I hope so. I hope I recover that I get to see. I haven't uh -huh. gone out yet, you know, I just attended yes. one day of uh, a very nice place. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I hope, hope so. Okay, so uh, I will see you around. Uh, and uh, WCD, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see each other in, in WCD. Yeah. Then. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, thank, thank you. you everyone. Thank, thank you, Peter. Thank you for uh, your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.